to every state championship in Virginia, to his next stop at Christiansburg High School where they became national level, to then leading the high school division going to Virginia Tech, where he took them from about to drop the program to trophy at the NCAA tournament, to now going back home to Iowa State, and uh, we see huge things in the future, the very near future, uh, bringing back to prominence Iowa State, the Cyclones. So put your hands together real quick, this is Coach Kevin Dresser. Okay, we gotta have a big room here. I'm gonna have you guys do just the opposite of what you want to do right now. Let's sit down, right? And we'll uh, we'll kind of I'll kind of have a little introduction, let you know what I want to try to accomplish here in the next hour. We've got a big room of uh, people that are uh, here uh, to learn and uh, share wrestling ideas, and, and that's really cool. Uh, for the compound people there that know Coach Yates, uh, when I went to Virginia Tech. We started out and we were uh, basically took a program from nothing. Um, in 2007, we finished 81st in the nation at Virginia Tech. About 81 teams could qualify. That's pretty good, right? The next year, we stepped it up and we got 79th in the nation out of 79 teams that qualified that year. Heck of a coach, right? Well, we got it going and we finished uh, my last six years at Virginia Tech. We were in the top 10 all six years and we had a fourth. We got a fourth place trophy. Uh, in 2016, but my first two-time All-American at Virginia Tech was a Georgia boy. Any Georgia boys in here? Raise your hand, right? So anybody tells you guys Georgia boys can't do it, P. Yates was our first two-time All-American at Virginia Tech uh, under our thing. So let's give Coach Yates a hand real quick, right? And that was like a good time. But I'm a college coach now, and um, I'll tell you my story real quick, and then we'll get going, and I'm going to keep it simple today. I encourage you to write down or maybe use your phone to write down three things that I'm going to go over today. Uh, one thing about old guys is we've got a lot of experience. Uh, so I've been, I was a high school coach for 18 years and I'm getting ready to be on my, let's see, uh, let's see, I was 11 years, getting ready to start my second year at Iowa State, so I've been around a long time. Uh, so uh, as we get older, we can't do as much live wrestling, but we're supposed to be smarter. So I think I can really help you today. Uh, being that I was a high school coach for so many years. But let's do this because we got a lot of college coaches here. And you guys, they're here to see you a little bit, right? All these college coaches here. We got NAI, we got Division One, we got Division Two, we got Division Three, we got JUCO. Did I forget any levels? I think I got everybody. So, anybody right now here, we'll just have you, uh, if you placed in your state tournament last year, raise your hand. Raise it up high, all right? Coaches, you got a picture of all that now? If you were in the finals of your state tournament last year, raise your hand up high. Right, coaches, go to work now. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, if you were a state champ last year, one, two, three, four. If you're a two-time state champ, raise your hand. If you're a three-time state champ, raise your hand. You guys are probably only good with juniors, right? So that gives you kind of an idea, and I say that because, uh, you know, in the recruiting world, I think the opportunity to be a college athlete, whether it's JUCO, whether it's NAI, whether it's Division Three, whether it's Division Two, whether it's Division One, you guys are obviously special. Here you are on the first week of August at a wrestling clinic. So you guys are already special. You must really like the sport. And that's the first thing you got to be able to do at the college level. Is if you want to be successful in college, I don't care how great your resume is, you got to like the sport because it's work. But you know what? If you like it. Being a college wrestler is a great, great job. Hopefully you can do it for five years. And the NCAA keeps changing the rules, and pretty soon you're gonna be able to do it for six years. And I'll tell you more about that if you wanna know what I mean. But it's a great job if you like wrestling. It's a great job. So I'm glad you guys are here. If, if you're not getting, I'm gonna give you some information. If you're not getting coaches to reach out to you or call you, because maybe you're just not that guy that raised your hand yet to be a state champ, you can be aggressive and go after it. Obviously, you gotta do some work and get some credentials, but I can tell you when I first started out at Virginia Tech and even now at Iowa State, I probably get an email, and these college coaches can uh, confirm what I say, I'm saying, but I probably get an email at least every other day with an athlete that's getting ready to be either a junior or getting ready to be a senior, sometimes even a sophomore, with their resume, either from their coach, themselves, their dad, their club coach, and you know what? 
I, I, I kept some of those guys. My response usually was, thanks for the email. I like reading your resume. Please send me another email in about two months. And then if I got another email in two months, and in that email, I asked them to update me on how their season was going. So I'm giving you guys some information. If you want to get yourself out there, pick maybe five schools that you like. Send them an email. Let them know who you are. Don't be afraid to be a little bit pesky. Uh, because there's a lot of D2 and D3 schools and NAI schools that are enrollment driven. So they're going to be excited to have you. And it's going to be your shop. And that's really all we want, is everybody wants a shop. Okay? So real quick about Coach Stresser. Take that or leave it, what I just told you. Grew up in Iowa, was a couple times state champ. I'm gonna give you my resume real quick, and then we're gonna learn. Got a chance to go to college at the University of Iowa. I'm in Iowa State now, so um, the University of Iowa isn't my favorite school, but when I was 18, they were. I got a chance, I got recruited by a various amount of schools. Didn't get a lot of scholarship money. Uh, took it, took, went to the University of Iowa. Ended up winning two Big Ten titles, was a two-time All-American and a national champion. Uh, that's the good news. I sat on the bench for three years and set the record in Iowa for most wrestle-offs lost those first three years. Most wrestle-offs lost. That's not a good record, but that's the record I had. But I got it figured out. I was very persistent. I was determined that I was going to get in that lineup. And the reason I mentioned that was I was fortunate that I was on five NCAA championship teams in five years. I was in that day day when Coach Gable was really kicking butt. My senior year, we had six guys in the finals, five champs. We blew the NCAA record apart, and it's still blown apart. I got a chance to be on five NCAA championship teams, five rings, which is pretty cool, and I'm bragging about that because that's what I try to emulate now as a coach because Coach Gable was a great coach, but the best thing he did was he put together a great environment. I think that's what each one of us as the coaches in this room try to do, is when you get in a great environment with a bunch of guys that want to be studs, good things happen. So after I got done competing, I had a chance, I got an opportunity to coach out on the East Coast of Virginia. I went to a school that was very serious about wrestling, Grundy High School. I was there for eight years. We had eight state titles. They already had a couple going there. So I wasn't as good of a coach as my resume might might lead to. But then I left Grundy and went to a school and started all over Christiansburg, and we built Christiansburg up into a really tough top 10 program in the nation after having a couple of first rough years. Uh, we finished with, I think, five state championships. And then I took over Virginia Tech. I told you a little bit about that. Had a good opportunity, that, or had a good, uh, good run at Virginia Tech. And then I grew up in Northwest Iowa, only an hour from Iowa State University. And I got the opportunity to go to Iowa State University. So my quick commercial about Iowa State University, a couple pretty good guys wrestled at Iowa State University. Cale Sanderson, he wasn't bad. Dan Gable, he wasn't bad. Nate Carr, three-time NCAA champ, David Carr's father. Uh, a lot of tradition. Wrestling's very important at Iowa. We finished 45th in the nation this year. In our last dual meet, we had 8,900 people come to it. Finished 45th in the nation and 8,900 people showed up to watch the 45th ranked team in the nation. So I'm excited going forward because I know when we get back in the top 10, our place holds 14,500 people. I know that we can get it going. So if you're interested in Iowa State University, I told you a few minutes ago on how to get a hold of me, email me. Coach Yates has my number. If you, it's a great time. We're not very good right now. Great time to come to Iowa State. Moms and dads, we, we have actually have money to. Very rarely do colleges have money, but we got money because we don't have very many wrestlers right now. So that's my commercial about Iowa State University. Um, wrestling, all right. I know you guys got a lot of drilling you're gonna do, and you got two days of this stuff, and I know everybody's chomping at the bit to go, but I'm gonna probably just do a little bit more teaching here, maybe a little bit more, uh, give you some, give you kind of the answers to the test here a little bit. And I think the answers to the test, I mean what wins at all levels, in my experiences, and what we focus on, and the thing I think you'll be surprised that at least we do at Iowa State, we did at Virginia Tech, and I think most colleges do this, is we spend a lot of time working on very few positions. I call them winning positions. Very few positions. I know that when I first started coaching high school, I thought I had to show my kids. I thought my kids had to have an inside trip, an arm drag, a headlock, a lateral drop, a 
double leg, a single leg. Keep going, what else is there, guys? Um, arm spin. And all we did, all I did was teach them a whole lot of things that they didn't get very good at any of them. And then as I got my butt beat as a coach for years and years, I figured out, maybe not years and years, but about the third year the light went on, and I'm like, oh, we gotta figure out how to beat the Pennsylvania kids. We're Virginia kids. We gotta figure out how to beat the New Jersey kids. We gotta figure out how to beat the Ohio kids. We were on the East Coast. So I had to step it up as a coach and really learn how to coach and really learn what work. And so what I found out was there's a, there's a, you just have to be good at a couple things. And as you get older and smarter, you guys will figure it out. If you get good at one or two things, you can go out and shake hands with your opponent. You can probably think of somebody in your state right now. You can go out and shake hands with your opponent, and they're, and they're going to know your number one hold, your number one takedown, and they're probably still going to get it on you. Good example. How many guys have heard of David Taylor? You shake hands with David Taylor, what's going to happen? Sooner or later. Anybody got an answer? Raise your hand. Yes, sir. He's going to angle pick you, all right? Anybody ever seen Logan Stever wrestle? All right, what's Logan Stever going to do to you? We wrestled Logan Stever in the NCAA Finals. We knew exactly what he was going to do to us. We had a guy named Devin Carter. He took us down three times with a sweep single left feet. We knew exactly. So my message is you have to get really, really good at a very, very few things. And if you get really, really good at a very few things, you can go out and shake hands. And everybody in the building is going to know what you're going to do, and you're still going to go do it. You probably can think of guys in high school that do that as well. So, as boring as that sounds, now that doesn't mean you take away your fireman's carry, your inside trip, your headlock, but when you get good at just a few things, when you get good just at a few solid leg attacks, and maybe one thing from the bottom, and maybe one thing from the top, really good, sound, fundamental stuff, it's high percentage stuff, and you get really good at it, and rep it out, and that's what we're gonna do here a little bit, is rep it out, learn how to drill it correctly, you got a chance to really, really improve the rest of it, if you like it, okay? So, with that said, we're gonna do a light warm up. I'm not gonna kill you guys, because I know you guys got some live wrestling, and you got some drilling, and you're gonna be here all day long. So we're gonna learn a little bit more than anything right now, okay? Who wants to be in charge of the warm up? Anybody wanna do a five minute warm up here? There you go. All right, let's go, let's go. 